Yeah, so this one's called Diamonds and Pearls. The night that Shane McGowan passed away, I, I had, uh, I mean, I was a f- heavily influenced by that man's lyrics and everything when I was younger. And I remember falling asleep and I had woken up and in the middle of waking up, I believed I was dreaming as if I was talking to him. I had this, this whole conversation with him, you know, and they woke up and, and two hours later, I had the songs called Diamonds and Pearls. Don't worry, we're bound by the candlelight On the south side of town As the fire burns And someone's watching from the moon As we're together as diamonds Welcome to Cool Life Podcast, brought to you by TheRealThingDating.com. www.TheRealThingDating.com Paul Adar Records for Out Scouting. This girl grabbed my bangs and ran my head right to the speaker. Oh. And everyone here, like, just, yeah. When we shot the scene in Goodwill Hunting, I didn't know who most of these people were at the time. I mean, they weren't stars. It was Gus Van Sant that, that directed it. Gus Van Sant is on the floor with Matt Damon's character. I didn't even know who Matt Damon was at that time. I'm Eva John. I'm a former candidate for local government. I was a children's television entertainer and I love this world and I believe we should take care of each other and have a lot of fun along the way. Welcome to Cool Life. Here we go. (laughs) And welcome to Cool Life Podcast. I'm Eva John with our guest returning, John Stewart, musician, composer, singer, songwriter, recording artist. John, welcome. Hello, how are you, Eva, today? Excellent, thank you. I'm so glad Good. to have you here on our conversation about AI technology and the exactly. industry. Yep. You know, there are artists who are embracing AI technology and bringing this into their music. And there's an artist whose name is Karen Southern. And there are many artists, but in her case, she has used her own lyrics, her own songs, but she's using AI in the production. So the arrangements, everything else, she's saying, this is the future and she's embracing it now. And Mm. now, what do you think about that as a kind of a partnership in production of recorded music? Well, so so you're you're saying that the instrumentation and everything is done entirely by by ai yeah it seems like the the production portion of it and i know that again i i I know there was a time way back in the 70s where what they tried to do when synthesizers just came out well exactly i mean this is just the answer to that right this is what the ultimate answer is to that this is like uh someone back then would have would have their mind would have exploded if they would have told them that that uh, 30 40 years from now will be thinking of of robots and being able to do stuff for us to have 20 years after that for it to be a reality is that's something different yeah well for sure i mean people were already yeah. offended that you could use a synthesizer for it i mean it wasn't great sound oh yes but to to recreate the sounds of things like flute and of oh, course, oh, oh yeah, yeah replacing instruments on live on stage yeah because what it used to cost to hire like a a, a violin player, a flute player. Yeah. But in some of the programs, I mean, I've, mm. I've experimented with some, and it's like I know others that are maybe a little more complicated where you can do things like you can give a description of the type of so a little riff that you want to use. Yeah. And you can, you know, say what genre and how long you want it to be. Yeah. And then AI will create that with some kind of horrible 90s drum machine sound going on. Absolutely. Then you yeah. can just loop that through over and over yeah. and just have that as your base platform of song. 
and and do that in seconds. Yes. And save yourself literally hours and hours of laying down tracks and yeah. having to do yeah. with moody musicians who need a few more cups of coffee and yeah. you know and say, well, is that the way to go? Do we want to buy music that's been put together that way? A lot of music producers who are saying, hey, listen, if you know how to do this, if you can learn how to do this, you're going to save yourself hours and hours of work in the studio. Oh, yeah. And you're going to put yourself ahead of the line of all the people yeah. who haven't caught up to this technology. You're going to be the first in. You're going to yeah. be grinding out you know, 20 albums in a year. Yeah. And you used to have to wait for all of the elements to come through and pay musicians yeah. and pay for hours and hours of studio yeah. time. Like you've seen it the real authentic way and you know yes. the expense that goes into producing. Yeah, may, exactly. Maybe would I, would I uh, try it that way for fun? Maybe, but I still love the authenticity of like, I want those stories. I want those, I want those pissed off musicians that need coffee and they're, they're like, Oh, you know, like, Oh, they're not even up yet. It's noon. Come on. You know, <laughs> we got an hour to get there. And someone, you know, like, we actually got Mary Fivey's band. We we got Stefan Stefan was the cellist for Celine Dion. He was asleep upstairs because we were recording at Studio 306 in Toronto and Queen Street. And it was like in morning time. And uh, Karen DiNardo from, uh, from um, the Travis Institute, she was there. She was organizing this recording session, right? And so she said to us, she said, Stefan lives straight upstairs. All I have to do is call him and he'll probably come down and do it for some, some, some dollars, but he'll come down. He's probably going to be in his PJ still. He's done this to me before. And sure enough, he came down with his, his big, huge cello and he sat there in his PJs and his first morning coffee did three takes and we got that song. It was gorgeous. So beautiful. You know, and, and first that's the thing, thing. It, the creative yeah. process with true talent is an yeah. amazing thing, not just to hear the final product, but it's, to... it's the experience, it's the experience, the real experience. We watched them do one take of just listening to it and playing with it. The second take was okay, now I've got the basis for it. The third take that was the killer one, that was amazing. And we're like, oh my god, that's that, that. <laughs> and he was done. Then he we shook his hand and he sipped his coffee and went back upstairs to bed. <laughs> That's the kind of stories, you know, it's, it's fun to have those stories. And not every yeah. performer can do that. And that's the no. thing when, when you're dealing no. with someone who has a lot of talent, where it's just flowing through them. Flowing through them. Under yeah. any condition that, you know, not that you want to put them through any condition, no. but they can, can then deliver. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen not, I've seen uh, friends who uh, uh, myself, I, I, I choose not, normally not to, drink uh while on stage i try not to because like it just ruins ruins me right so i don't i'm not saying i never have it just i just don't but there are friends of mine who i know who can do this like religion and they're they they they, they seem not even affected by it you know and that is that is something bizarre of another thing the, the strength in certain people to be able to perform perfectly like that. It's like, uh, it's bulletproof, right? It's crazy. I, I get it. And you know, yeah. it's always been a, a big thing is controversial in the entertainment industry, especially yeah. in the music industry, more oh, than especially. any other form of entertainment is, yeah. you know, what conditions are you putting yourself through? to perform and you don't want to necessarily put yourself through that because yeah. when you're off the stage, then you're still dealing with that substance and what yeah. other effects are there on your life, not just your performance. Exactly. True. It's maybe another episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, all those stories. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're okay. going to our, our sponsors and supporters. But before we do, we're actually going to hear a little song from John Stewart. John, so you're going to share a new song with us? Yeah, so this one's called Diamonds and Pearls. Now, I had a, I had a, 
the night that Shane McGowan passed away, I, I had, uh, I mean, I was a fr- heavily influenced by that man's lyrics and everything when I was younger. And I remember falling asleep and I woken up and in the middle of waking up, I believed I was dreaming as if I was talking to him. I had this, this whole conversation with him and I'm saying to him, Shane, please, you know, let me be your vessel. Give me something. Give me something to work with you. I remember saying that, you know, and they woke up and it was just one of those moments you wake up. Wow. You know, and two hours later I had the songs called diamonds and pearls. So. Wow. In between diamonds and pearls, we will take care of our men and our girls. Start a new life as we see it the sun, we will bury all the ones that are gone. I'm her lover now. Don't worry, we're bound by the candlelight on the south side of town. As the fire burns, and someone's watching from the moon. As we're together as diamonds and pearls. All the spirits in the graves and transcending all the gangs of our days that you appear like a ghost light and you're shining somewhere between diamonds and amazing song i love it i love it thank you thank you very much for sharing that oh thank you there's nothing like true creativity and seeing just how it can touch the human heart and i think that's why music will always be important no matter how the technologies change those lonely days of lockdowns and isolation are gone for good Go to www.therealthingdating.com. That's www.therealthingdating.com. It's time to share. Share your time, share your life, share your love. 
www.therealthingdating.com. Join for free. Upgrade at any time, starting at just $5.99 a month. www.therealthingdating.com. Because it's time. You're listening to The Cool Life Podcast. We'll be back in three, two, one. We're back. <laughs> so with some work being done with bands in using AI, there's one fellow who's got a band called Deliverance Ride. Okay. Honor. And their whole sound is a Metallica sound. Okay. To the point where it sounds like Metallica, as in who needs Metallica. All right. They are mm-hmm. using AI. Or he wow. Is using AI. And I I know, I'm just like, you know, just like counting the days before we hear about an enormous lawsuit with Metallica. I'd say. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I I was Metallica, I'd be like, hey, yeah. that's what are you doing with my songs? <laughs> and the thing is that these are his own original songs. Again, once again. There is no. a copyright issue. So oh. it's like this is original, these are original lyrics, no one's ever heard these lyrics before. Yeah. They are using AI to uh, put together their music and they are using AI to, I think, some of their the lyrics. However, like, like, like vo- vocally, vocally they're, too. They're making the sound sound like Metallica. So it like, sounded like James Hetfield's voice. Yeah. It, oh, so it's like, so it's like, what? It's what? Like, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. No. So it's oh. like, so it's like, oh. how, like, how long can they get away with that? I don't wow. think they're getting away with it. That's the thing. I, I, I don't really think, think so either. I, I I agree. I think, I think yeah. Some and be I mean, warned. There's... I think any smart lawyer, what they do is they wait for oh, yeah. that product to gain value. What's the point and, of suing oh, yeah. someone who's made two whole it's million got nothing. dollars? Exactly. Right? Going to wait till you make two hundred million dollars? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yes. Dummy. It's... To get, if not fifty percent, to get. A hundred percent. If any material that they can demonstrate is wholesale theft of their original exactly. artist, right? So yep. not so much that it's a copyright issue. The lawsuits are going to be a little different now, where it's yep. not for copyright. So yeah, if it's an original song, mm-hmm. an original song with the sound of a, an existing artist. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So it's like, no, maybe, maybe they're not in court right now, but I, I think that her building needs to you know, yeah. review what he is going to be going through in the. Oh, future. absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a hard, it's kind of hard because we're talking about creativity and yeah. where it's just under any conditions, it's hard to think someone would take advantage in any way but because you know, it is a tough industry and it yeah. say well no one would have known my name if i hadn't done this and even if you take take the whole album take its value yeah i now have all kinds of contacts and experience and my next album is not going to disappear without a trace because people know me now exactly yeah who knows, who knows? yeah now i remember now you might be a, a better authority on this subject of okay. David Bowie. Yeah. In 1995, mm-hmm. he's always so far ahead of his times. Yeah. That he had a song, "Hello Space Boy." Yes. That was 
done through a program called he had that song written with a program called Verbicycle. Oh, right. Okay. And no, again, this is 1995. Yeah. So this is an, an analog age computer program. But the, the <laughs> you know, that was around the time, though. That was the, if, if I remember correctly, 95 was around the time when him and Trent and Reznor were hanging out, they're all buddy buddy, and they're writing songs together. And uh, uh, hence the influence, I'm sure. <laughs> And of course, you yourself, you've been involved in a lot of work with Bowie's music. And you're yes, I have. Yeah. Friend. Well, 40 years of it, pretty much. Right. Yeah. And so, I yeah. mean, just such a creative force. We're taking a break and we'll be back with more sure. AI talk and music talk with John Stewart on Cool Life Podcast. Those lonely days of lockdowns and isolation are gone for good. Go to www.therealthingdating.com. That's www.therealthingdating.com. It's time to share. Share your time, share your life, share your love. www.therealthingdating.com. Join for free. Upgrade at any time, starting at just $5.99 a month. www.therealthingdating.com Because it's time. This is Cool Life Podcast. Please remember to subscribe to Cool Life on your streaming service and on YouTube as Hellenique Today. That's H-E-L-E-N-I-Q-U-E Today. Because that helps us to bring more cool stuff to your ears. You're listening to The Cool Life Podcast. We'll be right back. And we're back on Cool Life Podcast. I'm Eva John with John Stewart talking about AI. Hey. So, John, for artists, you know, and their reactions to this, I think right now we're not hearing a, a lot. As far as your gut feeling, the whole idea of this being the future, you see this as something that could easily be folded into your songwriting. Um, I think in in some ways we're not going to have much of a choice. Um. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, it, I'm, I'm a creature of moving on with, with everything. It's what I always have done, but I'm still the guy who writes a song with a guitar, right? And that's what I do, right? So I've always done that. I've never changed that. My, my sound has changed here and there. I've, I've done, there's many different types of genres I've, I've, I've stepped inside before. I've worn many hats, you know, um, will I... Uh, use uh, AI to, to play with it one day, uh, maybe, perhaps. However, though, uh, I really, really love, I, I don't want to lose the, rea the reality of making a song come alive on live tracks. You know, it's funny. I even still, like, still really enjoy the reel-to-reel -reel noise, the hiss of the reel-to-reel -reel when you're in, in playing back in your ears. As it's you hear a tape, warm tape going, you know, I still, I still, I love that, you know. Uh, however, I mean, it is, it is probably in my future. That I, I can't, I never say never to anything. Well, I, was, I was saying, I wrote the song called Rosewood Thorn years ago, and it's all about that. It's all about, you know, I'll never say never, I'll never do that again. <laughs> The music industry has had so many different changes and advances. People no longer, like you plug everything yeah. in through a laptop, right? Everything, like yeah. Like mixing sound, playing sound live. It's just not about the big, bulky, life-changing. The big, bulky everything. gear gear around you like, like you're some kind of robot, ironically. You know what I mean? 
like that that's uh, the spaceman it's like that's kind of gone now you know you just it's a there was a funny someone made a meme the other day of uh of musician from 1987 it's a picture of slash wasted on a stage with a ball of jack daniels and a guitar lying on top of him and there's to the guitar player today there's a guy with a cup of coffee with a mustache sitting there and sipping coffee playing on his laptop you know right. <laughs> That's the yeah, truth. That's, that's, that's not wrong. wrong. That's exactly it. That's the Technology truth. And the industry. <laughs> yeah, that's just the way it is. <laughs> well, the way technology is working, you know, even something we were saying earlier that they almost don't need the artists. If the labels wait yeah. long enough, soon oh, enough, exactly. as those artists, that generation of artists, gone, the next generation, they don't even need the artists. They can't. They, they don't need the artists anymore. They don't. They just don't need the artists. They, in, in for for their what, what they are about as a company the companies don't need the artist they don't if if they sucks. decide to go that way i hope it doesn't go like they, they could yeah. like that in fact a label the idea of a record label can easily disappear because it's about distribution you know, well they, exactly they streamlined music to the point where they streamlined music to the point where you go on a streaming service so well, if the streaming was, service yeah. is your distribution, then they can be the ones signing contracts with an artist and just being like, hey, we're going to do a direct distribution through Spotify. Mm -hmm. Spotify can say, we are the label because yeah. they have access to... A publishing, a publishing deal as opposed to a recording contract. I don't think a recording contract even exists anymore. I don't, I don't never heard of one in years. You know, I, I hear lots of publishing deals. Lots of publishing deals. I you never hear the word recording contract because people don't really record anymore uh, with the uh, with the guidance of a recording company. It's it's a publishing deal. It's a full package deal. It's a multimedia deal. It's the full package. It's everything all in one. And I think some of those big names may disappear if if Absolutely. Spotify doesn't need them, yeah. right? Spotify, yeah. they don't need Sony, right? No, and no. The Apple Music. Apple Music can do the same thing. They don't, they don't need a label to say, no. here's our artist, everybody come up with your dollar bills. It's like, no. Yeah. They're like, we have a built-in audience. Oh, exactly. People who yeah. are forking over money for this, and now we're just going to change yeah. their package to cover this new album and yeah. the next new artist that we present. And that artist probably doesn't even exist. <laughs> no, no, exactly. No, no, exactly. It's a, it's its own oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't need, doesn't AI, need, you need the artist. AI creating AI for AI. For AI, yeah. And what's the key words here? AI. <laughs> but there's still going to be an exchange of money because of there the is. streaming services and just how they set yeah. up their packages for, yeah. for their audience. And I mean, it all comes down to what will happen with copyright. If they take original artists out of the equation copyright is mm -hmm. no longer an issue and it's about, it's about, yeah exactly exactly yep copyright has always been a tricky thing i mean yeah. um, right now ed sheeran is in a horrible lawsuit situation with the estate of marvin gay that's right or <laughs> thinking out loud yeah because it sounds like let's get it on way too much <laughs> yeah. and it's yeah. like if that's what the song sounds like it sounds like let's yeah. get it on yeah, it's still being weighed out in court. I mean, you know, and I know, as you were saying earlier, yeah. there are certain chord progressions that sooner yeah. or later, you know, someone's going to use that same chord progression to cap off the end of their song. Exactly. It's just, it's, it sounds nice to go. Ah, na, dum, ba. That's it. Yeah. And how many songs in just the same way? Say, hey, you ripped off my sound. It's like, well, that's a kind of a standard chord progression. It sounds good to exactly. our souls. And now they've got to defend that in court. And oh, for sure. Layer on top of it that that chord progression may have been captured amongst, as we were describing earlier, all of the information that's yeah. taught to AI by looking at existing music, existing artists, and crunching that down to a new a new song that yeah. doesn't have a copyright conflict because it didn't exist before, but it's based on things that did exist before yeah exactly <laughs> it's crazy that uh sure. ed sheeran actually has another lawsuit going on with um another one of the songs so it's like his music 
I, I don't think he meant to be derivative, but I really think that mm. unfortunately he's being. There is a couple of them. Remember the first time I heard him, Eva, the very first time I heard him. And I can't tell you the name of the song. You no, know, Photograph is his, his current lawsuit going on with yeah. um, someone named Tom Leonard. He's saying that okay. it's based on his song, Amazing. So wow. It's like, so it's like, mm. well, you know, and it's like, you know, a judge is going to do it. They're going to use certain, you know, artists who are, you know, this is their specialty. Yeah. And they're going to say, is it derivative? Is it a part of someone else's original work? Yeah. You know, um, and one of my, I keep mentioning this, I think I've mentioned it before, the Verve. Right. The Verve, I'll never forget that as long as I live. You right. know, in 1995, those guys, like, they couldn't even afford to to be in a band together at that time. And that was back then. They couldn't afford to, to be together as a band. That's 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 bad. <laughs> uh, but when they made it big, their biggest song was, yeah. you know, where they sampled the Rolling Stones song. Yeah, um, you know Mick Jagger and Keith Richards wrote, and it was from the last time, and so yeah. that that was put into Bittersweet Symphony. That was put into, yeah. and then the lawyer, what they they made the mistake of not getting permission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the uh, lawyers they sat down. They said, "Okay, listen." They worked something out, and they worked out a 50-50 deal, right? and everyone signed. But there was a misunderstanding, and I don't think Richard Ashcroft realized till later, fifty mm. percent was going to Keith Richards, and fifty percent oh. was going to Mick Jagger, oh. and he makes zero dollars and zero cents on that That's song. Sad. That's every sad. Time he plays. But it's their biggest song. It's their biggest song, like by a long shot. Like I mean, Richard Ashcroft has had a, a decent career, but I mean that song was legendary. Yeah. Legendary. It's in every ad company on earth has used it for everywhere from car commercials to to uh s selling bikinis to whatever they they stay that's what they, <laughs> they anyway this is the last time And Keith Richards and Mick Jagger make yeah. money a single time. Yeah. yeah. And and that's just it. You know, good managers, good lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Anyway, and with that, we'll uh, we'll call it a day. And I mean, I think we could right. talk about this rest of the night. We I know we always we always have fun like this, right? But and, what a subject, so, you know, AI yeah. and music and copyright. Oh, yeah issues and originality um, creativity yes. john thank you so much for your time and no problem, eva. your attention thank on you. this all the best to you and until thank next you. time i'm eva john cool life podcast and that was our show thank you for listening to the very end please remember to subscribe through your streaming service to get more access to our guest interviews also, please subscribe on YouTube to help support our podcast. Until next time, I'm Eva John for Cool Life Podcast. Thank you for turning me on.